more concerning thing to me is when recession proof businesses or recession resistant businesses begin firing employees, uh, whether it's actually on the floor or in their offices themselves. And um, what we are witnessing right now is just that. So um, Walmart has already laid off thousands of employees this year. And of course, Walmart is the largest private employer in the United States. But uh, it's very concerning when um, this recession resistant business where do people go, right? During a recession, when they're downscaling their spending, right? The, the largest department store chain in America, they go begin buying their groceries there instead of uh, the actual grocery store, right? They're trying to cut back on costs. They go to these lower cost retailers like Walmart and it's the largest private employer in America, as I said. But it shows you the severity of this economic downturn when even a recession proof business that sees this huge influx of customers during recessions is firing people, right? That's very concerning. U.S. taxi service uh, Lyft will uh, see more job cuts as a part of a cost-cutting measure. A Wall Street Journal report said that over 4,000 employees or 30% of Lyft's workforce are likely to lose their jobs in the coming few months. The decision to cut jobs comes just weeks after its new CEO said that the company was not for sale. The company already had a round of layoffs in November last year when it laid off 683 employees. The reports of fresh layoffs pushed Lyft's shares higher by 4%. However, compared to its bigger competitor, Uber, Lyft has struggled. Not only is the firm's stock down 11% this year, Lyft has lost its market share after the lows of the pandemic-era restrictions. First developing tonight, it's happened again. Tyson Foods now saying it will be laying off even more staff. Good evening. I'm Alexandra Burnley. And I'm Darren Bob. It comes just a month after announcing the closure of the Van Buren plant. This time, roles in senior leadership and corporate positions will be cut. Five News reporter Michael Wilson is here now with exactly how many jobs are expected to be eliminated. In a memo sent out to employees attained by Five News, it doesn't give an exact number of how many staff members will be laid off, but it does give a percentage, and this could be a sign of what's to come. Looks like Tyson is really kind of reorganizing its senior and corporate leadership team. And in doing so, the company is cutting 15% of senior leadership and 10% of corporate roles. These recent efforts have been all about driving efficiency and avoiding duplication. Lance Turner is with our content partner, Arkansas Business. He says the roles being cut speak to the company's current profit margin. First quarter earnings report that was really disappointing. Profit down 71%. Tyson's looking hard at its operational efficiencies. It's faced with rising costs like everybody else is. And it's trying to find ways to, uh, to further cut those costs. In the memo from Tyson CEO Donnie King, he wrote, quote, we will also continue to look for ways to simplify our organization internally to execute our global strategy. To create more efficiencies and make the organization smaller and more simple to operate in and also easier to make big decisions. In March, the company announced it will close its Van Buren plant on May 12th, causing nearly 1,000 workers there to lose their jobs. And last October, Tyson asked all corporate employees to move to Arkansas. Moved. Uh, from from far away to northwest Arkansas and now you're on the end of these cuts. That's a tough thing. Uh, and we know that this week Tyson will be meeting with those staff members who will be losing their jobs in Springdale. Covering news where you live, Michael Wilson. In other developments and Amazon is starting a massive round of layoffs. The company has reportedly begun laying off members of its human resources and cloud computing division. The move is part of previously announced job cuts that are expected to impact up to nine thousand employees. This roundoff of layoffs follows the thousands of job cuts that took place earlier this year and last November. Now time for today's trending tickers. We're watching shares of JetBlue. The airline giant's adjusted loss per share came in smaller than expected and it posted record revenue as it continues to see strong demand. The company is forecasting a profit for the second quarter as it expects robust summer travel. Despite operational challenges, the stock there up about 1%. Also watching shares of Gap as well. Those are off of more than 5% here. The retailer is set to cut hundreds of corporate roles in a new round of layoffs. That's according to reporting from the Wall Street Journal. This comes after the company eliminated a large number of workers this fall. Also watching industrial stocks, 3M stock here on the back of the company's earnings beat and its announcement to cut 6,000 jobs. 
And of course, General Electric, that stock, taking a look there, the company raised its guidance thanks to a strong outlook for its aviation division. Now, some analysts remain cautious about work that still needs to be done in GE's power division. New this morning at 6.49, a manufacturing giant 3M announcing mass layoffs are coming as sales fell from last year. The company plans to let 6,000 workers go worldwide. That's 10% of its workforce. In central Iowa, 3M operates facilities in Knoxville and Ames. It's not known if the layoffs will impact operations in Iowa. We've reached out to 3M for more information. Tonight, Bed Bath & Beyond, the home goods retailer famous for those big blue 20% off coupons, is closing its doors for good, telling customers we've made the difficult decision to begin winding down our operations. It's a good store. We're all going to miss it. The company filed for bankruptcy today after a tumultuous year of job cuts and store closures, but ultimately those strategies fell short. We had Toys R Us that were all toys, Circuit City, all electronics. And we're seeing that stores like those are the ones that are really struggling right now because I think consumers want to buy everything they need in one place. For more than five decades, Bed Bath & Beyond became the go-to store for linens to pots and pans. The brand even found its way into the fabric of pop culture. Whoa. The new bath mats are <laughs> But online giants like Amazon changed consumer habits, testing Bed Bath & Beyond's business model. This is called offline shopping. It's like online shopping, but in real life. In an interview with the Wall Street Journal, co-founder Warren Eisenberg admitted, we miss a boat on the internet. Since the beginning of the year, other well-known retailers, including Party City and David's Bridal, have also filed for bankruptcy. What do you think that this is signaling right now, and can we expect this list to grow? I personally don't think that brick and mortar is dead, but I do think that retailers really need to excel in every way that shopping is available. So brick and mortar, online, and then maybe even things like live shopping. As Bed Bath & Beyond begins liquidating its assets, customers can expect some big sales. 360 stores will remain open for now. All right, well, Disney says it is laying off several thousand workers across the company this week. The cuts affect its parks, entertainment division, and experiences and products division, as well as ESPN. This is the second of three waves of layoffs for a total elimination of, listen to this, 7,000 jobs. Goodness. That's roughly 3% of Disney's entire global workforce. And Chief Executive Bob Iger says the goal is to save about $5.5 billion in costs, and he also says... Shareholders should start receiving those big dividend payments in February after a pandemic suspension.